and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So today we are going to be reviewing the Milani Screen Queen Foundation. We're going to get into the ingredients, what I think of this foundation based off of my use, and if this foundation actually will protect your skin from the blue light damage caused by your phone screen or computer screen. And for basics, it comes in 45 different colors. It's described as a weightless foundation for all skin types. It's supposed to blur imperfections, even skin tone, and of course, protect your skin from digital damage. That's why it's called Screen Queen, which means that it's going to protect your skin from the blue light that is put off by your devices. And it has a light to medium coverage with a luminous finish. So let's talk about blue light damage and its effects on your skin. So the idea is that blue light, high energy visible light can cause damage to your skin. It is very close to UV very by wavelength. They both have short wavelengths and this could lead to hyperpigmentation, signs of aging. This has been a very recent thing that's come up. First, we saw a lot of this blue light protection in glasses and eyewear, and now we're seeing it pop up a lot in skincare. So the idea is that your phone, your computer screen are emitting this blue light, and this is going to cause premature signs of aging because we, of course, are now a very digital society. We're very much in front of our computer screens, our phone screens, but from what I have seen, it seems that the blue light in your phone from your computer screen is at least a hundred times less intense than it would be from the sun. So for me, I think I would be more concerned about the blue light from the sun than that from my computer screen or my phone. And sunscreen is not going to protect you from this. It specifically works for UV rays. SPF does not apply to the blue light spectrum. As long as the product can show it can block any sort of blue light, they can put it on there. There's not an SPF rating like you have with UV. So for all you know, it could be SPF 2. So what is in these products that is giving this blue light protection? A lot of formulas, we can use some kind of algae. In this foundation in particular, I think it's the iron oxides. Iron oxides are a group of colorants, and these can be brown, yellow, red, black. These are pretty much what makes up I think every foundation I've pretty much seen has them. I'd be very surprised if there was one that didn't have an iron oxide in it. Iron oxides have been shown to block this high energy blue light. It also features some antioxidants, which are also going to help with free radicals, that kind of thing. But those are very minimal in here. I think the primary source of this blue light protection comes from these iron oxides. So the ingredients in here can theoretically help with blue light. But it seems that pretty much every foundation, because it has the iron oxides, would give some sort of protection. This is a very lightweight foundation. It's supposed to be a lightweight foundation. So even if you put it on, the amount of protection you would get may not even be that significant to where this blue light protection should be a selling feature of this foundation. It's very similar to foundations that have sunscreens in them. If you don't use two megs per centimeter squared of your face of that foundation, which can feel like a lot of that kind of a product, you're not going to reach that intended SPF of the product. So let's get into my thoughts on how this foundation performs. So this is a very quick drying foundation. This foundation will dry up fast on you if you don't work quickly on it with it. The first and two ingredients are isododecane and water. So isododecane evaporates very quickly. It's present in a lot of matte liquid lipsticks and I have made the mistake of dotting this all over my face all at once and some of those spots were a lot harder to blend out because I took too long to blend them out. So just so you're aware, you need to work with this foundation very, very fast. The third ingredient is butylene glycol, and this is a very lightweight humectant. Heavier ones would be something like glycerin, and this is gonna help with texture. The butylene glycol is gonna also help with slip, which is the ability for it to spread over the skin. The fourth ingredient is ethyl palmitate, and this is an emollient. So this is gonna impart a very soft feeling to the skin, and it is also gonna help suspend those pigments in the foundation. A lot of people don't know, but these you can't just mix solid colors in. There has to be something they're suspended in to make sure that your product is uniform, doesn't separate out. This foundation does give a very nice look to the skin. It 
feels very soft. So the fifth ingredient is our first silicone ingredient, and that is trimethyl siloxy silicate. It is a film former, so it's gonna help it last longer. It is gonna also be lightweight, again, lightweight foundation, and this is gonna help enhance the spreadability as a lot of silicones do. So this seems very low on the list for a silicone to appear. Usually you'll have dimethicone or cyclopentasiloxane higher up in the list, and I believe that this usually helps with the texture of the foundation. And not only does this dry fast, but if you have problem skin, I don't think that you're gonna like this. Because I didn't, my skin was acting up for a good month, I wanna say, when I was first trying this out, and I did not like how this looked on my skin. I feel like it made my skin look very dry. I feel like my skin looked really bumpy. It, I feel like it enhanced those imperfections instead of covering them up. And I think it is because of the lack of silicones higher in the formula. Usually something like cyclopentasiloxane or dimethicone higher up in the formula, I feel helps blur these imperfections. For instance, when you see a lot of smoothing type of primers, the Professional, um, there's one for Makeup Prep Forever, they are very much silicone based and help give a smoother base to the skin. And I think if there are more of those in this foundation, it would give a lot better look. If you don't have significantly textured skin, this foundation does really look nice um, for evening out color. It looks really good. It does give a really nice luminous finish. I'm wearing it today in case you were wondering. And I really like how it looks. Also, and I know they say this is for all skin types, but I feel like if you had dry skin, this also isn't gonna help because it's gonna pick up on a lot of those dry patches. Because it does dry fast and it does evaporate, I feel like it sticks to dry areas. Make sure your skin is properly moisturized if you are closer to the drier side. And when my skin was good and moisturized, this foundation looked really, really good. It's a nice, lightweight foundation. I like to wear this just so I can have some sort of coverage and feel like a human. So overall, I would recommend this foundation. Like I said, it's very nice, it's very lightweight, but if you do have problematic skin, this probably isn't gonna be the best one for you, and I feel like I'll really like this in the summer, you know, hopefully when we can all go outside again. For blue light protection, I wouldn't weigh that too heavily into my foundation choice as, as this one is marketing itself as having blue light protection. I wouldn't really be that concerned about the getting blue light protection from my foundation, especially if the blue light you're getting for most of the day is coming from your computer screen or your phone. I would be more worried about it coming from the sun because pretty much all foundations have iron oxides in them. I think you could pretty much get the same kind of blue light protection from any foundation, they just don't all claim they have blue light protection. So I hope that you guys learned something new today. If you did, please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe so you can learn more about makeup and what goes into them. And with that, I will see you in my next video.